Hi, I'm Chris Blackaby from As He Is Ministries, and we are doing a series on the New Creation Gospel. And this is the beginning of Series 2. So there's been four sessions before this for Series 1. And this is the beginning of Series 2, where we're going to continue to look at the incredible gift that we've been given, the person of Jesus Christ. Now, the Gospel, it says in Romans, is the power of God for salvation. And salvation is the removal of sin and all its effects from our lives, our bodies, and from the earth. It's an amazing thing we've been given. And the gospel is the power for that. Not ministry, not good works, not denominational rules. And these may be all good things, but they're not the power of God. Spiritual gifts aren't the power of God for salvation. The gospel is the power of God for salvation. And the reason is the power is, is it removes you from being a human and changes you from a human to being a son of God, a different class of being. And the DNA of this being is the DNA of Christ, the same incorruptible seed. So he is your older brother and you are like him in every way. And you have his righteousness, you have his holiness, and he is your salvation. So now we're going to look at more and more of the repercussions of this amazing gift of the new class of being that we are, a son of God. I want to start by reading uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 21, absolute classic. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. So you're a new creation, not of the old creation, you're not of the Adamic creation, the fallen creation, the estranged, separated creation. You're part of the new creation, the heavenly man, born of God, born from heaven. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And there we have it. God reconciled us to God, and now we have the same ministry of reconciling creation to God. People and creation. Ministry is not to build someone to yourself or to your church, or to your mountain, or to your to your organization. Ministry has one purpose, is to connect that person, or creation, but that person to God. After I've ministered, if I've done well, according to Jesus, you will love me more, but need me less. I've taken somebody and said, hello, sir, <laughs> here's the Father God, and now you know each other. Because the new covenant, is that I'll remember your sins no more, and no one will need to teach you, for I'll teach you myself. And that's the maturity of the new covenant, that every person will know God for themselves. If you're just born again, you will need lots of teaching. But as you go on and on, you become more knowledgeable of Father, His character, who you are, who you are in Him, and how that all fits together. It is the privilege of privileges to be a child of the Creator for eternity. Yeah? That is, God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and trusting us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ, God making His appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, He made Him to be sin who knew no sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And there it is. That's what the new creation is. Once you're reconciled to God through believing the word, the promise that God would do this for you, that Christ did do this, Christ, who knew no sin, became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. And that's the righteousness that we are, the righteousness of God, his righteousness. How righteous is God? That's how righteous you are, because Christ is your righteousness. Christ, who is God, has given you himself, and he has become your righteousness. And this is the rest that we're in. From now, we are just at rest, because he who has entered Christ's rest has ceased from his strivings and his works. There's nothing more to do. You are done. You've received the, received the gift. You're a peak righteousness. You can't be any more righteous than what you are. You can't be any more acceptable to God than what you are. Your attitude your actions, they have consequences on the earth, but they don't have consequences 
in terms of your acceptability to the Father or your access to the Father, because that's to the finished work of Christ. And all these other issues are changed, are, are removed. And in your intimacy with Christ, your attitude and your actions do change. And that's the fruit of the Spirit. If you change them to get to God, that's works by the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's religion. But through knowing him, wanting to be like him, you change uh, through the work of the Spirit, I mean, led by the Spirit. And then no flesh is involved, so no man can boast the same way you got saved. It may take decisions, definitely, <laughs> and some hard decisions. But decisions come from being with God. You're not changing your life so you're accept acceptable to God and you can go find him. You're accepted in the beloved, in union, uh, already together, already at peace, already one. What God has put together, let no man separate. If any man be in Christ, he's one spirit with the Lord. You're one spirit with God. And now, from that one spirit place, all life flows, all change flows. And that is the fruit, the fruit that lasts. Okay, this is eternal fruit, eternal change. If you change to get to God, it means nothing in this era or the next. Because that's by the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil. And that's what God's kicked out of God's presence. That's what Jesus got nailed to. <laughs> so don't know good and evil to make a law, make a rule, make a church culture and behave to that church culture and believe that's getting you back to God. Okay, that's fig leaves. That's offensive. Receive the free gift. Because if righteousness could be achieved by behavior, then Christ died for nothing. Everyone teaches you that, that. Paul says, may they be accursed, even the angel from heaven. He says it's no gospel at all. Right. Every person at any time of history can receive the promise. Any economic level, any education level, any intellectual level, any age at any time in the 1200s or now, it doesn't matter. You could be a farmhand in a, a farm in the north of Norway in the 1200s and receive the gift of the word. You could be a scientist or you could be a politician, you could be uh, raising five kids by yourself, it, you could be uh, an orphan who's been abandoned, it doesn't matter. That's all earthly descriptions, and any one of those people can receive the free gift by believing what God has done for them. And they change from there, they change beings, they change to being a son of God. And God can use any circumstance to mature you, if you're raising five kids, or you're a carpenter, or you are a milkmaid in Norway in the 1200s, because you can become like him, have his nature expressed through you. Now, the tree of knowledge of good and evil is how we know right from wrong. And to know right from wrong is good. Uh, it's very effective. To have a law protects you and stops you from doing silly things and damaging yourself and others. So why isn't it good? It's not good because we use it to qualify ourselves before the Father, which is offensive. Because if you're here as far from God as you can possibly get, and then by the knowledge of good and evil, you start doing things to get yourself closer to God, I've started giving money, and I've started reading my Bible, and I've started going to church, and then I didn't go to church this weekend. I read less of the Bible, but I said sorry, and I went to a worship meeting. This going back and forth, trying to get closer and closer and closer to God, is religion. A religion of our own invention by the help of Satan. This doesn't exist. This whole process, getting closer to God, closer to God, and doing things wrong, getting further and further from God, doesn't exist. You either separate from Him or one with Him. You either have the Spirit of Christ or you don't have the Spirit of Christ. You're either a saint or you ain't. And there's nothing in between. You're either a human under Adam or the complete righteousness of God being one of his children. You can't go back and forth like this. This doesn't exist. There's only here or here. If you've received Christ, then you are raised and seated in heavenly places, one with him, and you have his righteousness <laughs> forever. He's wiped by your sins. You're clean in his sight forever, which was always his plan. By your DNA, by receiving Christ. All behavior flows from here. Let's have a quick look at the tree of knowledge of good and evil <laughs> from uh, Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. 
He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat any tree of the garden? And that's the point. Did God actually say? He's questioning the word and the character of God. And you'll see all sin in your life is from this question. Did God really say? <laughs> is he really going to do it for you? Is he really that good? Is he telling the truth? This is the fundamental pattern of going to the flesh as opposed to the spirit by a promise. Did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. <laughs> Another lie. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So his devil is saying, God's holding out on you. Okay, He's not going to father you into this through relationship in the core of the garden. And he's not going to give it to you. So if he's not going to give it to you, if you don't have it, then reach out with your hand and take it. That's what he's saying. And what we find out, if you think of your life and humanity... All sin, absolutely all sin, no matter what it is, thought or deed, is you reaching with your own hand to take something by your own strength that God wants to give you through relationship. And the reason you've reached out with your own hand is you don't believe God really said or that he'd really do it for you. It's a question on God's character and his word. And those questions come from another father, the devil. Okay, that's his record. That's his voice saying, did God really say that? And you, then you work out, oh, you might read the Bible and say, he did really say that. And then he says, but will God do it for you? <laughs> He's holding out on you. He knows that you're missing out on something. So just reach out with your hand and take it. Now, this is more important for us in this situation and talking about righteousness. If you don't believe that God has given you his righteousness, if you don't believe you have it already, he hasn't given it to you, you'll reach out with your hand and take it. You'll do something. For the knowledge of good and evil, you'll do something good. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil has one fruit, the good and evil fruit. <laughs> Here it is. The good and evil fruit. Okay? If you do something good, you've done something evil. It's one fruit. It's not a good fruit and an evil fruit. The good and evil fruit. You do something good for God, I am going to start an orphanage for God so that uh, he's happy with me and I'm a good Christian. <sighs> okay? You've just done something evil. If you're doing it to become righteous, to put yourself before God, okay? It's a religion of your own invention and you're reaching with your own hand to do something to get God's approval through what he wants to give you through relationship and a gift. But if you receive his approval as a gift. From there, start 10 orphanages. <laughs> from peace, from rest, co-working with your father. But as soon as you don't believe you're with your father, if you don't believe you have his acceptance, you'll do something to get it. And that is all our spiritual laws and denominational laws and Christian laws that we judge ourselves by, by the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and we judge others by. Now, these laws aren't bad of themselves, like, you know, don't um, ride your motorcycle through the church building, okay, all right? That's a good law, okay? And But you don't not do it to please God. <laughs> you're with God. And because you're with God, you love the people, you love the church, you want to change and do what's constructive. And same for anything else in the kingdom. It's from this intimacy that all life flows. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and she was a delight to the eyes, it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of it its fruit and ate. This one here. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, so Adam was right there. And he ate. And the eyes of both were opened, and they knew they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves loincloths. And then they hid from God. As soon as you know you are standing before God, you will know that you are naked and shame enters and you will hide from God. As soon as you rank yourself, your ability to be with God, 
for his pleasure to be in you, to be raised seated in heavenly places, to be his precious child. As soon as you start going down that way and you start looking at your life, do they read the Bible? Do they not read the Bible? Do they go to church? Do they not go to church? Do they watch that movie? Do they not watch that movie? Do they say that to my mum? Do they not say that to my mum? Etc. Etc. As soon as you start reading these things, okay, you're using the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to measure whether you can be with God or not. That is the wrong page of the wrong book, and it's very offensive because that's the tree that God has kicked out. It's the tree that Jesus got nailed to. Don't use it. Just believe that God said. If you receive my son, you are righteous with me forever. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is like the lose-lose tree. Because if you start measuring yourself, okay, at, at how well you're going, like these are my principles of faith, and I'm doing all these principles of faith to get blessed, or anything, and you think you're failing them, you will turn yourself away from God. You will condemn yourself. And if you think you're succeeding, you will go to God in the pride of your own achievement. Both don't work. It's lose-lose. Because they're both pride. I'm going to go to God with all my good achievements. That's the pride of conceit. God, you're wrong. I'm better than what you say I am. And if you look at your achievements and go, and the, your actions and words and attitudes, and think they're terrible, and they might be terrible, and think, that's terrible. I'm going to hide from God. That's pride. It's the pride of contempt. God, you're wrong. Jesus' cross didn't work. <laughs> I'm not as righteous as you say I am. Wrong page, wrong book. So there's only one fruit of the good and evil tree. Do something good or bad is from the wrong tree. The tree of life is to receive the words of life from Jesus Christ, the person of Christ, and be with him. Accept that and you're born, you, you die with him, you're raised as him, and you're raised and seated with him in Christ. Acceptable as Christ is acceptable. Now, each denomination and each expression of Christianity has certain levels of commitment, okay? And if you don't, which is fine, but if you are doing that to maintain a standard before God and before the church, it's a tree of knowledge of good and evil, and it will kill you. It will bring death. It brings death. Now, let's say this is me, because this was me, <laughs> hypothetically. This was me. So I worked really hard for my church, and uh, gee, I was probably at six meetings a week and plus doing other things and uh i burnt out in the end funny that but i had a really strong soul okay so i kept going and going and going and going because i could just hold discipline together keep turning up keep showing up keep producing the fruit but the weakest link always breaks and my weak link was my genetics my body and my body collapsed and it wouldn't come back and even though my soul wanted to keep going my body collapsed because the knowledge of good and evil brings death. It's the big clock. It's coming. It's coming around. It's coming around. You will reap what you sow. Don't even doing good things for God. Now, if my body was strong and my soul was strong, I'd keep going. I'd marry some girl and then I'd have this absolute commitment to God. And maybe she doesn't have the same soul and body as me. And she can't keep up this same standard. Well, death's coming. Death's coming, <laughs> like it, it brings destruction and eventually one of us will break and if she has a weaker soul than me, a weaker body than me, she'll break first and she'll get sick as many pastors' wives do or if she's in a certain situation, she may need to get out of here to live and may commit some sin that disqualifies her for Christianity, for ministry and probably my marriage. <laughs> and then, because she, she just can't handle it anymore and boom, she's off and living a wild life and people will say, wow, how did that happen to poor Pastor Chris? He's such a good guy, so committed to Christ. How could she do that to him? But she didn't do that to me. I did that to her by maintaining a standard by the knowledge of good and evil. That was too high for her. Okay, But if she's also strong, so we met at Bible college, we're both like, let's take this nation for Christ and we're gunning for it. Our kids will break and our kids won't follow Christ. Because the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is cruel. It's cruel. That's cruel. That's cruel. Religion wants you dead. The devil wants you dead. Okay. He wants death to come to you. He wants you to die saying God's not a good father. That's his plan. Okay. We have to see it as absolute poison. Just get rid of it completely and only accept the fact that we're born again and risen and seated in Christ in heaven with him it is acceptance by the tree of life, the person of Jesus Christ. 
An answered prayer is a tree of life. This is the person of Jesus Christ. Your prayer has been answered. You've been restored. Eden's been reversed. You now have complete access to the Father at any time, at all times, because you believed a word. Because how we get kicked out? We didn't believe a word. We didn't believe that God's word. We believe the word of a lower father, okay, another father. So now we believe the right word, and you're right back. The plan of God to have sons who are righteous and pure before him forever. This is the good news that we receive through our promise. And let's pray for this. Father, we receive the good news. We want to believe you and believe your word. You are a good father that never lied. We renounce and repent of listening to another father that says you don't have it yet. God would not give that to you. So reach with your hand and take it. Lord, we ask that you would cancel that out and cancel all the fruit from these decisions. And Father, if we have lived by the tree of knowledge of good and evil through our own strength and it's hurt other people, then you are just and right to forgive us when we confess that and wipe it from our slate. It's not held against us in any way. And we ask that you would restore those marriages, those children, those businesses, those churches now that the truth has come. Thank you, Father.